Hello everyone, in this video we're going to look at the different types of programming languages that are available. It turns out there's a lot of different types and they have advantages and disadvantages and we're going to look at a bunch of them here in this video. So let's go ahead and jump into the material. Programming languages are the foundation of software development and there are different types of language that cater to various different needs and requirements and we're going to explore the different types that are out there along with examples, advantages, and disadvantages. The first type of programming language we'll look at are low-level programming languages. Examples of this are assembly, x86 assembly, and ARM assembly, so for specific CPU architectures. The advantage is you have a high level of hardware control since you're programming at a very low level, and you can get efficient resource utilization. The disadvantage is a steeper learning curve. You will have to learn about the processor architecture and the inner workings of the machine, and you have limited hardware portability. These things are typically designed for a specific hardware architecture, so you're writing a program specifically for for this, but you can get some very high performance, but there is a learning curve. Let's go ahead and look at our next type. So opposite of the low-level languages are the high-level languages. Examples are Python, Java, C++, and Ruby. And the advantages of these types of languages, they're easier to learn than the low-level languages. You can get some greater productivity. There's lots of libraries out there that have extended functionality that you can use. And platform independence. These the code can be recompiled on a different architecture and run just fine. Some of the disadvantages are potential performance trade-offs. You won't get the high, ultra high performance you would in a low level language and you're going to get less control of the hardware. So those are some of the trade-offs. Let's go ahead and look at another type of language. The next type are scripting languages, and examples of this are JavaScript, Ruby, and Perl. And the advantages are you can really do quick development, and it's ideal for web and automation. So particularly JavaScript is used heavily in web development, and the code can actually run in the browser. The disadvantages of things like uh, JavaScript are limited for CPU-intensive tasks, so if you have a lot of heavy math calculations, not the best choice, and it's a little bit lower performance. So those are the scripting languages. The next area are functional languages. Examples of this are Haskell, Lisp, and Erlang. In the event is you get strong parallelism, so they're designed for specific use cases. And for the type of application you're going to use this for, you can really get reduced bugs through immutability. The disadvantage is there's a steeper learning curve since they're very task specific. And again, they're not suitable for all tasks. So that's the functional languages. The next area is object-oriented languages, and examples of this are Java, C Sharp, and C++. And the advantage of these languages is improved code organization. You can really have <clears throat> far more reusability through objects, and as well as a, a better understanding of the code. You can model code after real-world objects. The disadvantage is, is there's a risk of potential over-engineering and potential performance overhead because you will get some performance overhead with the object structures and the and additional bookkeeping and memory work that that requires. So those are object-oriented languages. The next area are domain-specific languages, or DSLs. Examples include SQL, SQL, HTML, and CSS. SQL is specifically designed for databases and HTML for web development. And the advantages of these are they're tailored for specific tasks and you have a reduced learning curve. The disadvantage is it's limited to a specific domain and may require a general purpose language to go with it. So if you're developing a website that's an active website, you may have a combination of different technologies like HTML, CSS, SQL on the back end, and maybe even C Sharp in the middle if you're doing a Microsoft solution. But these are domain main specific languages. And finally, our last area are compiled languages. Examples of this are C, C++, and Rust. The advantages are there's high performance. Compile time error detection is high, so you can find a lot of things that are wrong with the code. The disadvantage is it's a little bit longer development cycle, and you have less flexibility compared to interpreters. In summary, diversity in programming languages is essential. Choice depends on your project requirements and expertise. Technology continues to evolve, offering more and more options for software development. Well, that's really it for this video. Thank you so much. If you like this video, please click the thumbs up button. If you'd like to see more 
videos like this, please consider subscribing to my channel. Well, that's it for now. I'll see you in another video soon. Bye-bye.